This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, here on this episode, this is part two of um, uh, uh, going over Christian's um, commercial setup and his blueprint. Now we're looking at the prototype to see exactly what it is um, that his blueprint was referencing, um, and then we're going to go ahead and check it out um, to see exactly what he's trying to put together um, with the blueprint. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. Without further ado, roll the film. Okay, this is uh, a small prototype for um, our commercial setup. It's actually not looking um, like the way we will have our commercial setup, but it's just proving the concept of vertical growing with aquaponics. And um, in the bottom line, you can see the fish tank on the right side uh, and uh, the media bed. In the middle and on the left we have uh, biofiltration. So we do not have all the components in this small setup. If we go closer we'll take a look at the light setup we have used. This was supposed to be full spectre but um, we think it's not. You can only see blue and red. And um, we have used strips, so we save a lot of space here and the temperature here is actually very comfortable. So we can grow the salad all the way up here. And as you can see, the spread is also very good with this kind of lighting. So we're actually evaluating if we're gonna use this kind of lighting in our systems or not. The price is also pretty fair. Um, here you can see the thermo thermometer, thermometer. <laughs> and um, this is uh, the water and this is the temperature in the air. And uh, if we follow this pipe here, the water goes down in the next section, and the same on the other side. And the water ends up here, in the fish tank. So in this fish tank, we are only using um, uh, aquarium fishes. This is goldfish. And we are only using this for tests, but the levels are pretty good. The nitrate level are good, and um, and the um, and the pH are stable. It goes from 6.8 to 7.2, and varies stable among these grades, these um, points. And uh, the term the the water levels are good, and yeah, the fish are doing actually doing pretty well. So if we follow. The water flow from the fish tank, it runs down into the media beds here. This small one is actually just to catch up small or bigger particles so they don't run into the, this system right here. Uh, the media beds has uh, worms and some plants and the water runs from the media beds and down into the biofilter. In the biofilter, we have uh, a classic setup. So, uh, this setup, as we told you, this is not, it's not uh, compared to the setup in the blueprint, but it uh, is only to prove how we are going to build our concepts for uh, investors. You can take a look at size. We're actually using uh, some kind of an NFT system here. This is um, what we wanted to know if we, this would work on a large scale setup. The water comes in and runs out. And the flow of water is actually pretty slow. Okay, thank you very much. So first of all, what I want to say is I actually, for um, uh, on a rare occasion, I actually like this small hobby setup right here. I actually like it. It's not predictable and it's not built with the fundamentals, but it is, um, it is, I like it, man. I like it. I like, I've never seen the, um, the little NFT trays that you have, that you put together like that. I've never seen that where they can pull them up. Um, I thought it was a Dita, like a shallow water culture uh, type of setup uh, before I seen you pull them up. Um, so I actually like that. It's pretty interesting. This is something that would be uh, nice for a small hobby setup. 
um, the entire setup um, where, you know, because when you're doing hobby stuff, you don't, most people doing hobby stuff, they don't care about how um, efficient it is um, at doing its job. From the people that I've seen doing aquaponics, they just want, to, want it to look good. So this would be a nice setup for that. Like I said, I actually like it, man. I actually like it and uh, like the way you have it set up with the LED lights. That is, those are pretty much the only lights that are going to work in this small setup due to the uh, low heat emission. Um, so I like it, man. I like it. Now on the large scale, which is what you're going for, a commercial scale, um, like I said, it's not going to work. As we already discussed in the first episode, um, it's not something that I would recommend, especially once I heard you say the word investor. Once I heard you say the word investor, that it just confirmed it even more. You don't want to be playing with this type of stuff right here. Because first of all, you don't have, it's not going to be predictable. If you add the media beds in there and you're growing plants in there and the solids are accumulating in there, it's not going to be predictable. Labor costs are going to be through the roof. No investor, I don't care how much money you make off of, if you were to design that system, not one investor would invest in that. Not one, I don't care if you were making a million dollars a month, not one investor is going to invest in that because it's not predictable. You're not, unless you have it systematized, which is going to take you a long time. If you do it that way, it's going to take, it's going to take you a very long time to systematize it, to figure out exactly how much feed needs to be put in there, the maintenance scheduling, all that stuff that you have to tweak out doing that. So that, that's why I say simplicity, 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 get the media bed out of there, model it, especially you're dealing with investors. They want predictability. I want to know what I put in and what or what you put in and what you're going to get out. How many how many vegetables and what you're going to sell them for and how often can you produce that? Predictable. They want something that's predictable. There's no question about it. And the system that that you have in place so you can have it run without you being there. They need systems set in place. So, that's why I say use a, a, a already modeled system that's already withstand withstood the the test of time. It's been modeled and used by the majority of commercial uh, applications. Just used, I would use the UVI setup, um, and but you can uh, modify the filtration portion, um, which is uh, one of my recommendations. That's what I would do. I would simply, I would just simple simplify it like that. I wouldn't do anything extra, nothing crazy. The investors are going to come in. They're going to pay you money. They want they want predictability. So, and that's what's going to give you predictability. As long as you can maintain uh, proper uh, water uh, temperature and uh, ambient uh, air temperature, then you should have no problem producing uh, uh, predictable results. Of course, there's a lot of other factors in there. Um, you know, the um, uh, uh, pest control and stuff like that, pH, all those other uh, uh, um, parameters and stuff like that and, and things that need to be factored in, th those need to be considered as well. But uh, mainly the temperature is what gonna um, is what's going to, uh, ensure that you can have something that's predictable and along with your feeding rate. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it, but predictability is the main thing. So I want, really don't want you to go in one of those routes, man. Don't get caught up with the hype out there. Everyone adding all these mixed systems. Do not do that. I'm telling you right now, do not do that. Um, and especially when you're getting investors involved, they're going to want to see something simple. All the crazy stuff, especially if it's someone that knows about aquaponics and they're into farming and they already know, like, this is too intricate, it's too creative, it's too much stuff going on, they're going to say no. So let's prevent all that. DWC system, set it up. Hopefully this helps you out, Christian. I know you're going to listen. You sound like a man that listens, and like, like you sound like you do your research, and um, it sounds like you, you're going put to put together a nice team. You're already talking about investors and stuff like that. Sounds like you got your mind in the business area. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to take heat. So just go ahead and go with that. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to save you a big headache. And it's going to also be able to ensure that you can at least back up what you talk when you're talking to investors. So this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Christian, I hope that it, hopefully this helped you out. Um, hopefully it helps you out. If you have any other questions, send the video um, and, and, and share it with everyone else. So everyone else could get the same type of enlightenment and they can get some advice as well. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!